The thing I want to talk to you about has everything to do with where do I go to church? What about moving churches? When do I go to another church? Is it all right for me to leave the church I'm in and go to another church? Uh, recently, a couple of weeks ago, I read some study that they were doing and one of the facts that they provided based on their study was that approximately 11% of the people who during this pandemic went to a particular church where a member of a church will relocate to another church. I don't really understand that. I don't really understand the dynamics and the whys and, and all that, but I can see where that that is possible and I see where that that is uh, a reality. But think of that for just a minute. Say you got a congregation, you got a hundred people. On average, that means a lot of your churches are going to see about 11 people relocate to another church just because of the goings on of this pandemic and things that have happened. And maybe they saw another church online they liked better and they thought, oh, I'm going to start going to church over there. There's a lot of things to be said about that. And I want to try to make a point here to show you just how self-centered and how self-serving that a lot of our decisions can be. And it's actually misguided. And I want to show you that. Take, for example, where do we go to eat? It is the age old problem with many married couples. My wife and I, whenever we talk about where do you want to go to eat? I don't know. What do you feel like? I don't know. What are you craving? You feel like going to Longhorn? Do you feel like going to, you know, Chinese or Italian or what, Mexican? What do you feel like? You feel like a taco? But it's everything to do with what I feel like, what I want, what I like. Sadly, that same carnal process of decision making has crept its way into the way people make a decision about where do they go to church, how long they stay there whether or not they go somewhere else, whether they stay in a position. I had one pastor tell me several years ago, I walked in and I said, how's things been going? He said, well, we don't have a piano player. What do you mean? Yeah, he said, a uh, piano player left and he went somewhere else because they pay him $50 more a week. I don't know, folks. I just have a real problem with that because to me, there's no real spiritual aspect of that. It's all about self. It's like, making a decision, where do I go? Do I want Mexican? Well, I'm kind of craving, you know, Popeye's chicken. So that's where it's about what I like and what I don't like. That's not how you make decisions on where you go to church. Well, this church is a little bit closer to me. And so, uh, you know, they're 10 minutes closer than the other church I'm going to. And so that's where I'm going to go to church. That is not how you make decisions on where God wants you. That's how you end up with people uh, like 10, 15 piano players in a church. And you ain't got room on the platform, but one, maybe two. And the other 13 or 12 sometimes rarely ever even get used. That's how you have people in other churches where that they need these helps and ministry helps and they don't have it. It's because you got way too many people that are making decisions based on what self wants, what I like, what our church wants. You don't go to a church just because, well, they got a better youth group over here. They got a bigger senior citizens club or whatever. This church has got a few more people going to them. These people seem like that they're hungrier for the Lord. You get down on your face and you pray and you seek the Lord and ask God, where is God's will? I've watched people before leave a good church that they were in God's will because that church was going through a dry season and go to another church that was in a season of revival. Whether you know this or not, if you've been around for a while, churches go through seasons. They go through ups and downs. They go through seasons of dead, dead times and then other times of revival. If you make your decision based on that and not on the will of God, you're going to be in a mess. Take, for example, John on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I don't have time to go into the details of Pat Patmos, but Patmos was a horrible experience. It was a horrible place. And I can guarantee you that if John the Revelator would have had his rethers, he would not have gone to the Isle of Patmos. It's not a place that's pleasant. But he was there for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what God does. He sends you to a place because you will be helped and because you may help others or help that ministry. That's what it's about. 
It's not about what I like. It's not about, well, I, this their, their style of music is a little better or whatever. All of those is like trying to dis- determine wh- where you want to get your taco from. Well, I like my taco from Tijuana Flats, or I like my taco from Taco Bell, you know, or I like it from the taco truck. That is how people are making decisions, and that's where, where a lot of people get into a spiritual mess. Why is this so important? I'm, I'm telling you, this is a big deal and a big subject, and it's bigger than I can even express to you on video. I get people all the time who will message me, and they'll say things like, Brother Myers, this church that we're in, this is a problem, and that's a problem, and, you know, the preacher this, and these people that we go to church with, and granted, yeah, there's times that God may move you. I understand that. But a lot of times it's because something that somebody does not like your number one question should be is it god's will not just that but when people shift churches like during this pandemic if you decide to be one of those 11 percent that you start going to church somewhere else are you doing that because it was convenient it just happened that way i mean why did at what point did god go to you and say uh, look, you know, I, I want you to start going to church X, Y, Z. Did he or did he not? I mean, if he didn't, then that's a problem. Because in reality, that's not the way it works. It is a spiritual thing. And if you use carnal means to make spiritual decisions, you're going to end up spiritually bankrupt. You cause problems at the church you leave, and you can cause problems at the church you're going to. And you can cause problems within your own family unit. You need to make sure that everything you do, you're in God's will, and it's not about what I want, what I like, and they like, and whoever likes. It's not because the pastor down the road has been, you know, uh, liking every comment that I got on Facebook. It's not because they've been pandering to me. It's not because of any of them stupid carnal things that people make decisions on. Listen, you've got to get a hold of yourself and make sure that you're making the right decisions and where you go to church whether you leave obviously i've been at one place for 13 years but obviously there was a point in my life where god moved me and sometimes god moves people because their season or their time at that place is over and he's sending them somewhere else i'm not saying that you got to stay where you're at i'm just saying you better make sure that you know that you know that god's telling you to leave before you go anywhere. You better make sure that that's what God's will is for your life. And as a pastor, if there's anything that I've learned, like one pastor told me years ago, some people look a whole lot better going than they did coming. There are some people you think, oh, we just got to have them. They sing so good or they do this so good or they're blah, blah, blah. There's some people that'll train wreck your entire church and your ministry and make you wish that you weren't the pastor of that church because you had to you had to come on spirit what do you mean by that come on come on come on yeah come on over if it ain't god's will you better quit telling remember that red rover red rover send susie on over you better quit asking for stuff that you may not they may not be god's will so it may sound comical but on the in a real on the real is is real sad it really is and uh, a lot of people have made some real poor decisions and it's affecting them, it's affecting their life in general. Listen, when you go to make a decision about where God's will is for you, let me give you a piece of advice here. You've listened this long. One of the number one things that you should pay attention to, do I have a piece about where God's sending me? I've had to learn that myself. Do I have a piece about where God's putting me? That's one of the most important aspects of it. And also on top of that, I just personally have a hard time believing God's going to put you in a church that doesn't preach the truth because it can affect your family and all these other things. If they're not preaching the truth and it's a and it's a false doctrine, I'm not saying it's not possible because God can use you in an environment to affect that environment, but I'm saying it's slimly possible. I would believe there is rare cases where that, that's possible. Let me give you another piece of advice. If you have a talent, a calling, or a ministry, and God, supposedly, you feel led to go to this church, 
you know, because you've always wanted to live in the mountains, and so you moved up to the mountains, and or you always wanted to be by the beach, so you moved to Daytona, Florida, and now you're going to this church because it's close to the beach. Now listen, once you get there, and here you are, you're a drum player, and they got five other drum players in the church, and you don't ever play the drums, or you're a preacher, and there's no outlet, no anything, nothing for you to do. I just believe that in most cases, unless you're just not ready, unless maybe you've got sin in your life and the preacher can't use you, God likes to put us where we can be used. I mean, think about it. I've had people that got mad about something stupid that somebody else in the church did or said, and they were an instrument player in the church. They were used all the time. They left and went to another church and sat on the pew doing nothing, not being used of God. Now tell me, did that sound crazy or not? I don't know. There's a lot to think about, folks. But hopefully this will help somebody. Listen, I love you enough that if you have a problem or something's going on or whatever, and you have some questions, you want more details, private message me. I'll try to get back with you. But God love you, and I hope the best for you. Hey, get in the will of God.